Parent Mom Hacks, episode number 37. My name is Krista, and I'm your host. It's October 18th, 2023, and today I'm thrilled to have a really fun guest on the show. She's a mom, curly girl, labor and delivery nurse, and she is the host of the Pulling Curls podcast. Her name is Hillary Erickson, and we had the pleasure of meeting at Mom 2.0, which if you listened to episode 33, you know what an incredible experience I had. Hillary is a mom of three. She lives in Arizona, and I felt like we were kindred spirits in so many ways. Truly, our interview, it's about 30 minutes, but I could have talked with her for two hours. She's an absolute blast, has a fun sense of humor, and brings so much wisdom between her experience as a labor and delivery nurse in addition to being a mom to three kiddos. I know you're going to enjoy our chat just as much as I did, but before we dive into that, I just want to say thanks for tuning in, Mama. I started this podcast because babies don't come with instructions. As of this recording, I am chasing around a five-year-old that no amount of Googling, mom groups, or books were able to prepare me for. There's a lot of stuff people don't talk about when it comes to pre-pregnancy, during pregnancy, and postpartum. And as someone who was previously terrified of all of the above, I am here to help you pull back the curtain on all of it. And every now and then it may get a little messy. We may share a little TMI, but that's why you're here, right? My goal is you will leave every episode feeling refreshed, inspired, and hopeful knowing you are not on this mom journey alone. Now, there's a lot of subject matter to cover when it comes to mom life, and we are covering it all. So let's get into my chat with Hillary. First question, Hillary, is I would love for you to share just a brief birth story of your kiddos. You have three, so I don't know how brief (laughs) or not brief you want to be, but um, however much or little you would want to share about any or all of those baby arrivals. So by my last baby, I had been a labor nurse for eight years. So I was, I was on it and I didn't want them. I was like hesitant for every single thing they wanted. They were like, I want to break your water. And I was like, no. And they were like, I want to um, like check your cervix. And I was like, no. And uh, I was 12 days over. Finally, my doctor talked me into an induction. I was just so resistant to everything. Finally, when I let him break my water, she came within, I don't know an hour or two, 12 days older. Honestly, I just don't think my body would have had her without them breaking my water. But I was like, once you break my water, I'm committed to this induction. I might end up having a C-section. And I wish I had just been sure. Like (laughs) as a labor nurse, I get excited when people refuse what the doctor wants. Sometimes a lot of times the doctor's have a lot of experience and we should just go with it instead of being like, I'm smarter. And I, you know, I had residents at my hospital, so I really was smarter than them in a lot of ways, but they were impartial, unlike me, who was sitting there still pregnant. Anyway, so that's my biggest, and and prior to this, I cried for like a full day about this induction. I was 12 days older. My pelvis had split. I had glucose intolerance. I was miserable. Why was I crying? Why wasn't I jumping for joy that I could get that baby out and move on with my life? So anyway, it was just a lot of resistance that I wish I hadn't had. Needless, needless resistance. <laughs> and yeah, coming coming from a labor and delivery nurse. <laughs> yep. And that was your third one. So tell tell our listeners, I know we talked about this before we started recording, but how many kiddos you have and their ages so we know the playing field here. Yeah, so I'm an I'm an older mom. Well, I mean, I had my kids young, but my oldest is 23, and then I have a 19 year old and I have a 14 year old. Oh my goodness! So <laughs> we're going to be learning lots today, friends. Coming <laughs> from your host being the mom of a five year old, uh, lots still to learn. Lots I've learned in those five years, but lots ahead. I know. Well, Hillary, what is something that nobody told you about being a mom? I just think how much of yourself you would have to relinquish. I I just wasn't prepared for how the baby was going to dictate my sleep. How now that I had a baby, it was so like I couldn't hook in the car seat. We lived on the third floor. So trying to get the car seat down and then hook it into the car. I just didn't leave our apartment. Uh, 
there were like all these things that suddenly I had a baby and they just dictated so much of what I did. And I don't think I was prepared for that. And honestly, I don't know who could have prepared me for that, but I wish they had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause they don't come with instructions, right? There's no, that's the whole tagline of my podcast because babies don't come with instructions and it's all just figuring it out. Yeah, my capstone project in labor and delivery in college was a little thing that kids, that babies were supposed to, like, you were supposed to take home after you had a baby. So I thought, and I was married, hadn't had a kid at that point in time. I was 21. And I was like, this, I have got it. I'm going to save a copy of this for when I have my baby. I'm going to be so good because I know everything about babies after my, what, four weeks in labor and delivery. <laughs> turns out, turns out I did not. Well, every experience is different. There's so many variables that come into play from just our bodies to their little bodies to just environment. I mean, it, yeah, you, you know, you know all of that. Yeah. And why is every kid different? That's not fair. <laughs> I, once I have a policy on the first kid, it should translate to every other child as well, right? 100%. Everything <laughs> should be exactly the same. Wouldn't that just make it all so much easier? But right. so boring, Hillary, but so boring. I'm up for boring. <laughs> As a mom of a 23 and a 19 year old, I am here for boring. What is a piece of baby or kid gear that has been a lifesaver for you? Oh my gosh, kid gear. I loved, especially on my third. So I had a five and an eight year old, almost nine, nine ish, the front pack. I loved my ergo. So hauling her, I didn't love an ergo with a newborn. I think they've changed it. But hauling her to school pickup was so much easier in a front pack than hauling the stroller just because you have all the other kids that you're like trying to navigate. So I loved my ergo. And because my kids are small, I, I think I used it like until she was five. We would go on a hike and I'd be like, just get in this ergo. You still fit the weight requirements. So I loved my ergo. I had a McLaren stroller back in that I bought him back in 2003. <laughs> that I loved, but I don't know if McLaren's, they're not on people's list anymore, but I loved my McLaren because it, it folded up tight and didn't take up my whole trunk so I could still get groceries. <laughs> All about that maximum capacity. <laughs> <laughs> Maximizing the space for sure. Well, so let's really now get into the meat of what you do, the, your specialty. Let's talk about birth plans. So what is a birth plan and how can it help parents have a smoother birth experience? A birth plan just explains kind of what you want during your, your birth. And they come in all shapes and forms. I saw a lot from the bump, which is like a check on, check off. I want my baby to have a pacifier. I don't want my baby to have a pacifier. I plan on breastfeeding, that kind of a thing. And I would see that. I've had patients who every paragraph was in a different color of marker and they had stickers. And I was like, this is a patient for me. I love her so much already. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm like a washi tape sticker girl. So all the other nurses rolled their eyes and I was like, hand her to me. I'm so excited to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> and we were best friends. But it really just tells us what you want for your birth. And a lot of people think that it's like doctor's orders, right? Like, because I get a set of orders from the doctor. And as a nurse, that's what I have to carry out. So if your doctor says she can't eat, that's what I have to carry out as a nurse. That's my job is to carry out doctor's orders. So basically I can't give you food, but I'm not going to like knock your trail mix out of your hand because we're all adults in that room, hopefully. But a birth plan is not like doctor's orders because you might say on your birth plan, I want to breastfeed, but you get to the point where you're so tired or whatever. And you end up saying like, I want a bottle. I'm not going to be like, now Sharon on your birth plan, it said that you only wanted to breastfeed. And so I am really going to stick to that plan for you. And of course I'm going to adjust with it. People a lot of times say they don't want to have an epidural. So it mostly shows me the exciting thing for me about birth plans is that you've at least thought about what the heck's even going to happen in the labor room because so many people come in and they're just like, Oh, I need a pediatrician. Oh, breastfeeding. Like I haven't even thought of breastfeeding. At least I know that you've like, I don't know, you've at least thought about it. So I'm like hip hip hooray for that. Yes, it really, I felt like in my experience, it just more so put me in the driver's seat. In a sense, there's only so much you can plan and prepare for, but there are just lots of decisions to be made throughout that whole process. And it's your, it's your 
pregnancy. It's your birth. It's your delivery. And you are the keeper of this baby. So why be at the whim of other people? Or like, why be put in that, in what what is already such a stressful time, typically be put in that position to be making decisions. That's why I really appreciated having a birth plan, even though it really got turned upside down. But having the birth plan so you all knew, okay, here's what she wants. Right. Or even if you go to a C-section, you've put on there, I would love to go skin to skin, but you get out of surgery and you're loopy. I can be like, oh, Betty wanted to do skin to skin. Let's make that happen. Even though you're loopy, right? Because I can Mm -hmm. make a lot of things happen. Skin to skin in general, there are a few random cases, but in general, the nurse can make that happen for you. Even if you're asleep, I will hold that baby on your breast, on your chest, just so baby and you can be together. Or I'll hand it to your partner and they can do skin to skin. But there are a few things on there that we really can make happen if we know that's your preference, something that's important to you. That I like knowing that because there are things that I can make happen. Now, I can't make you not have a C-section, unfortunately. I mean, I would love to do that. But a lot of people come in with a birth plan where they're like, absolutely no Pitocin, absolutely no C-section, absolutely no episiotomy. And I'm like, well, you're going to probably end up with two or three of those. I don't know. Because I feel like when you go, because then I got into the law of manifesting, you know, because I own my own business and you can't, you can't run your own business without manifesting being shoved down your throat in many places. But I was like, how can these people who really want specific things, why are they not manifesting them? Because almost as a nurse, you're like, oh, why are you so stuck in your ways? And, you know, maybe they're so stuck on not having a C-section that their their body's just like C-section, C-section, C-section. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But I do find that patients who are married to this birth plan, absolute, when they're like, absolutely no you know, then we're going to be, we're going to absolutely do that. Just check that one off. Just prep the OR guys. I don't know. And so many people will yell at labor nurses for being like, it's you that's causing that. And I'm like, no, I am 100% on her team. I'm on team no C-section. Honestly, every nurse is on no team no C-section because it is more work for us in general. So we're, we're up for a vaginal delivery. Like just stuff happens. It's not like we're shoving you towards that C-section. So I don't know. Those are my thoughts on birth plans. They're varied. <laughs> They're varied. Yes. And I won't get into all of the specifics of my birth story because that's another episode for another day. But I did really appreciate that the doctors, because I wanted to have a, an all natural birth center birth. And when that clearly was not in the cards. We started there, but when that was not in the cards and I get to the hospital, I really appreciated that like my doula came and that the nurses and the doctors there really tried to give me that experience as much as possible. And truly a C-section is what it ultimately resulted in, but I could tell that was their last resort. They were really trying to make my plan happen. But at, at the end of the day, you can't, it, it is what it is. Her heart rate's dipping. At the end of the day, I want a healthy baby. Yeah. And, I, and thank I goodness want... for C-sections. I mean, so many exactly. people are like, oh, they're horrible. And I'm like, thank goodness for C-sections. Thank There's a goodness. lot of babies who would be dead. That's, yeah. what, that's what happened I... on the planes, guys. Do we want to be back on the planes? <laughs> right, right. Are there any misconceptions about birth plans that you think might be important to talk through? I I just think people are like if your ner- your nurses are bugged by birth plans because we we don't like to take orders and I'm like guys that is literally our main job is to take doctors orders so the fact that that's coming from a patient that we like versus a doctor who we may or may not like I'm up for it and I think all nurses are like I'm excited to see your birth plan some seasoned nurses who are doing it a long time are kind of annoyed a little bit by them because most of them are pretty much the same. <laughs> You know, I don't want a episiotomy. I don't want that for you either. I would prefer not to have Pitocin. I hope you talked with your doctor about that in advance because a lot of doctors like to just throw in Pitocin randomly, even though you're contracting on your own. And a lot of it, sometimes they just like throw it at us at the last minute and they're like, I don't want an IV. And I'm like, did you talk to your doctor about this during your pregnancy? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of education now. Okay, let's start having this conversation that I wish you would have had at 28 weeks with your provider. Yeah. Now it's like past the mark, past the mark now. Now let's take a quick break. 
Hey, secret mom hackers. Are you a budget savvy family looking for a financial tool that can help you take control of your spending and savings? Well, I've got something fantastic to share with you. Cube Money. Cube Money is the ultimate budgeting solution that's tailor-made for families who want to manage their money with ease and precision. Here's why our family loves it. It's just like the envelope system we all know, but digitized. Imagine the simplicity of old school envelope budgeting, but with a modern twist. Cube Money digitizes the envelope system, allowing you to allocate funds to specific spending categories right from your smartphone. It's like having a set of virtual envelopes for groceries, entertainment, and more all in one app. The whole family benefits. Cube Money isn't just for individuals. It's designed to accommodate the needs of your entire family. You can set up sub accounts for your spouse and kids, helping everyone stay on the same financial page. It's a powerful tool for teaching financial responsibility to your children. Stress-free savings. Planning for the future is a breeze with Cube Money. You can easily allocate funds for savings goals, whether it's a family vacation, a new home, or an emergency fund. It's all about turning your financial dreams into reality. So if you're ready to simplify your family's budgeting, track your spending with precision, and achieve your financial goals, give Cube Money a try. Visit their website at Cube Money to learn more. That's Q U B E money.com to learn more and use the discount code secret mom hacks, all one word secret mom hacks to get two months of their premium or family plans for free cube money on a mission to see you live more and worry less. Try cube money today. Now back to the show. Well, so let's talk postpartum. So we've talked a little bit about pre birth plans. Let's talk about postpartum planning, because we know that that can often be overlooked. I I feel like I overlooked it a bit on my side, in my experience. What aspects of postpartum planning do you think are essential for new parents? And and why is it crucial to plan ahead for that period? So baby Hillary, back in 2001, when I had my first child, he or 2000. I was like, how is he 23? 2000, I had my first baby. I went to a prenatal class and they were just like, baby comes out and then it's just sunshine and rainbows for the rest of eternity. And I was like, sweet, cool, cool. I wrote that manual. I am so ready for this. I was not ready for that. Breastfeeding did not work well. I didn't, I knew the basics of like how to know breastfeeding wasn't working, but I was so tired that all of a sudden I was like, I don't think I've changed a diaper all day. You know, like, it was just a big fat mess. My husband and I hadn't really talked about how we were going to manage it. I had read baby wise because that was pretty much the only baby book back then. And I, I'm a very scheduled person. So a portion of that book worked really well for me and that helped me out. But we just like, we, we were like, we have a crib and a room. We hadn't talked if he would ever sleep in our room, although that wasn't as much of a thing back then. We definitely had bumpers. Hello losers. But we just weren't ready. So I, when I started my prenatal class, when, well, first when I started teaching for the hospital, again, there, theirs were like, these are pads. You will wear them after you have your baby and then you'll go home. Like, and I was like, well, that is not helpful at all to these ladies. So I adjusted their plan for the postpartum section. And then when I created my own prenatal class for my website, I now have two full chapters on postpartum. So I talk about what to expect in the hospital, how to get the most out of your hospital stay, because a lot of people are just like, oh, those nurses are bugging me so much. When in reality, that nurse is such a fountain of baby knowledge. You should be milking her. For that knowledge, that sounds bad for a postpartum nurse, but you should be milking her for knowledge while you're in the hospital. So I explained how to do that, what to expect to the hospital, why we're doing certain things. And then we have a whole chapter on what to do when you go home. And I have a whole list of questions for parents to talk about together, because that is the point where your partner really comes into play. Like the one I stress a lot is how are you going to work to get four hours of complete sleep each of you every night? Because studies are showing that if you could just get that four hours, you can cope with having a baby. Whereas these people that are just getting like two, one, 
too. Your body just never gets that sleep that allows you to like turn into a human being. So talking about those things in advance, are you going to pump? Are they going to give a bottle? Are you just going to cross your fingers that baby doesn't wake up during those four hours that they're in charge? So I, I cannot stress postpartum planning enough. And also when people talk about getting a doula, I'm like, I mean, I love a labor doula. But if I had the monies, I would get me a postpartum doula 100% because I can't imagine how amazing it would be to have somebody who like knew all the baby things, even from someone who knows all the baby things to have somebody come in an objective person again, who just like, no, that's it. We, we know this is normal, Hillary. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is normal. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Seriously. So I had a, a labor doula, but I did, I don't know that I really knew that a postpartum doula existed at that time. So tell us your definition. What is a postpartum doula doing? She just comes in and does whatever the heck you want. I follow a few online. I honestly had not heard a lot. I did have patients in the hospital ask about if I would postpartum doula for them. And I was like, I don't think I can. And I don't think that sounds like fun, but there are people out there who love babies. They're fine to stay up with your baby at night. So most often they come during the night or they, they, they could come during the day. Most of them are lactation, at least counselors. They have some lactation experience. Again, a doula does not have to have any specific training. So Joe Schmo off the street could be like, hey, buddy, I'm a doula. So you want to get references from lots of different people. You want to see that they've done this in lots of different homes. They just come in. A lot of times they'll like wash the baby clothes while they're asleep. They'll make you some breakfast to be like a breakfast casserole. They'll just get up with baby. They'll give baby a bath. They'll even cut the baby's fingernails, which is like one of my least favorite activities. People would ask me in the hospital, can you cut their fingernails? I was like, no, that's no, immediately. No. <laughs> um, I they'll get just... one of those electric files. Yeah. For, that wasn't for that wasn't, my baby. Yeah. Because Those are so I, fancy. I cut her one time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I cut all her we had. one time, and I was like, "And I made my baby bleed, so I have to get an electric file." Yes. And, yeah, and and was using it until about two years ago. Quite honestly, <laughs> <laughs> she's like twelve, getting a manicure, and you're like in there <laughs> with your electric file. So they just come in and they help you out with baby. They mostly get up with baby during the night and they are either going to like wake you up to pump maybe. So they'll let you get those four hours of sleep and then help you get up and pump. They'll wash all your parts for you. They're just going to help you get some sleep in reality. And they're going to do it however you want. So if you're just like, just give baby a bottle. I don't want to see, I don't want to see light the entire time you are here. I want to put on my sleep mask and my sound machine and go to sleep. You can do that. Or if they, if you want to get up and feed the baby in the middle or something like that, they will hold baby off. They will, they will work to make it. It's a great way to get your four hours of sleep, although kind of expensive. So I'm not sure what a postpartum doula runs. I know it would vary a lot depending on where you were and, and the pricing there, but I've got to think, you know, you're thinking hundreds for the night. Yeah. But it does sound quite amazing. <laughs> quite Especially amazing. if you have great resource or like references because obviously yes. you'd want or if your friend had used one and I think if your friend group gets like knows a doula what a great baby shower gift especially on your second baby where you have a lot of the crap already yes let me sleep because now I have two monsters I don't know when I'm ever gonna sleep again absolutely so what are five must-haves every new mom needs when she gets home with baby let me, let me pull up my list because I made a list. Big pads, including Depends. Nobody talked about that when I had my babies. Why didn't they? Why, were, why haven't we been using Depends? I knew they were around because I worked nursing home when I had my first baby. We were using them on the old people. Why did I not grab a stash to use on myself? Because when you stand up, especially in the hospital, you sometimes don't have full use of your bladder yet either. So you squished your bladder as you pushed out the baby. So you've got pee, you've got blood because as, as you lay in bed, it pools and then it dumps out. So I would just say a small pack of Depends is going to make your life so much easier. It's going to be so nice to just chuck that in the trash. Then you want your overnight pads. Just having pads, I think is so important. Sometimes you talk to moms and they're like, pads? When they have to run by the hospital and grab them on their way home. And I will say that the hospital, I mean, it depends on the hospital, but some of our pads just suck. Like we gave moms three Depends, like we had a pack that was made by some company, three Depends, like five big pads. And then we were like onto the menstrual pads of the 1970s that my mom used to use. I don't need like their sticky didn't even work. We just tried to shove them in the mesh. So you may even want to bring them to the hospital. That could be something you ask on a hospital tour. 
the next thing I recommend is cut up fruits and veggies. This is a great thing for people to bring you. Maybe you're not up for meals, who knows, but I think having cut up fruits and vegetables in the fridge is such a great option because you're running on a 24 hour clock. So you don't really eat meals the same way. So having something in the fridge that's good for you and is going to keep you hydrated and healthy is going to be a win because you are automatically going to grab for donuts if that's your other option or crackers. Like if you have something, you just need something really super available, right? That doesn't mean don't get the casseroles too, but during the day you'll want the fruits and the veggies. Hey, this might, there might be some haters out there, but I recommend that every family has at least one bottle and some formula in their home just in case, because you don't need to be like, this isn't working and my baby's starving and everything's closed. Or I don't, I had to break into CVS to get a bottle. I don't know what you would do, but I recommend. And back in the day, you used to get all those things with your baby packs. They would give you a tiny bottle, which is great for a newborn. You would get little bits of formula. So I would encourage people to probably sign up on those formula pages. They will send you formula still they just aren't as available at the doctor's office like they used to be i also recommend the other thing which is not really a thing but the plan to get four hours of sleep at night i i push that a lot with my pregnant mamas which we've already talked about and then also easy clothes i don't think i realized what my body was going to look like after i had a baby And I remember we were going to a friend's house, which was a big deal anyway, but I just like put on jeans and went to their house and I fit in my jeans. My waist fit in my jeans, but my lady bits were so uncomfortable in those jeans. I thought I was going to die. So there's just a lot to think about easy clothes. So leggings, when you get home in the hospital, you're probably going to be five to six months pregnant still like your body will be because your uterus is still big. So nightgowns, wear your moos, ladies, just let, let there be so much air circulation wherever your baby has come out, be it C-section or in your downtown, because you're also going to have those night sweats and stuff like your body's just a mess. Don't provide it clothes that it hates. <laughs> 100% like the sleep dresses are amazing yeah. gowns like what if you can wear something to bed that you can get up and be like this is comfortable and still who's gonna see me I mean quite honestly you're right <laughs> taking care of the baby like you just want to be comfortable to, to your point let the air circulate <laughs> so I was much all about the the gowns and still actually enjoy it just a good flowy amen. dress amen, amen. I, I feel like my grandma but i don't i just don't care it reminds me of my grandma and i'm like she was a pretty great lady all right let's do this she she knew she, yeah, she knew she knew <laughs> so i've been snooping on you of course so all of your organizational strategy and all of that i love it and so maybe this is the direction you're you will go with this question but you can go wherever How do you keep it all together? You don't. I mean, you, you keep a facade, right? I remember after my third baby, my husband went back to work. My mom went home and I was just sitting there crying. And I was like, I don't know how these other moms do it. I don't know how I'm going to get the kids to school. And like, And like look like a human on the playground as we watch them after school and all those different kinds of things. And I finally realized that it was just a facade. Nobody had it together. So that that made me feel a lot better. I mean, some days I do have it together. And I probably look like I have it together more now, right? Because nobody lives at my house besides a 14-year-old. (laughs) It makes it a lot easier to look like I have it together because no one is spitting up on me in general. (laughs) So... I mean, I just, I don't plan on having it together, doing, plan on being happy, doing what makes you happy and feeling like you're, you're making some success in your life. That's all that I recommend. That being said, if you're losing your mind because of how your house is, which I don't do well in a house that's full of clutter, then I do think you're going to feel better if you take on some organizing projects instead of other things. That being said, when you have a baby, it's not the time to do the organizing projects. It's the time to get the four hours of sleep. So baby steps, times and seasons. I can't tell you so much times and seasons. All my friends were like, oh, I could never go to Disneyland because I go to Disneyland with friends a couple times a year. And I'm like, so many years where there was absolutely, there was no financial way we could go to Disneyland. And I had to be home with the kids and times and seasons. I am in a season where I can. (laughs) What is one tip trick or piece of advice that you would share with another mama right now just that nobody has it together stop stop comparing like oh betty down the street has it together no she doesn't 
if there there are going if you walk into Betty's house and you lived her life, there would be areas where you'd be like, she don't she don't got that together. Right. And as a nurse, you get a very intimate view of how people are living their lives. And so when moms are like, oh, I'm the biggest failure. I'm like, OK, you're not a meth head. We are at least trying to put our babies first as much as we can, and we're doing our best. Now, that being said, probably the meth head is also doing her best, and I should be less judgmental. And I, I don't know who's setting up this ideal that it has to look like X, Y, Z. I, I don't know where that all came from. Because if you, if you talk to the moms at the high school, we're all just like, girl, I got you. It is so hard. Because nobody has any expectations besides not killing them, right, and when they're in high school. You're just like... Yeah, these teenagers are rough. I want to cry a lot. They're mean to me. They don't listen. You know, none of us are like, well, my baby sleep. My baby's only breastfed. No one's doing that at the high school. Maybe there are some moms that are like, my kid has a 4.0. But in reality, even the 4.0 kids are mouthy and rude and don't have enough. Like they're they're You're like, get out of the house. Go see your friends. Stop studying. You know? <laughs> yeah. It is nice because older moms... Moms of older kids are much less judgmental because there is no standard that we're all trying to keep at this point in time. We are literally just like, oh, man, this really is hard. And why are we not that way with newborns? Why can't we be less judgmental and be like, oh, are you breastfeeding? Who cares? Are you feeding? Is your baby growing? <laughs> is is your baby sheltered, fed, clothed? like the Right? Right. Or even clothes. Right. I mean, a baby in a diaper is adorable as long as it's not <laughs> freezing outside. I live in Arizona. You can keep your baby in a diaper half the year here. So <laughs> I, I believe that after having now been to Arizona my first time, I, I get that. It's hot. It's hot here. It's hot. <laughs> is there anything that we did not cover that feel you feel like based on the fact that babies don't come with instructions? And you are one amazing, awesome labor and delivery nurse with three kiddos who are older. So for those of us mamas who have younger kiddos, is there anything we have not covered that you feel is important? To lower, know? lower your expectations. Have like lower your lower your birth room expectations. Of course, make the plan, but lower what you think is going to happen. Lower your expectations on how a family vacation is going to go. Lower your expectations of how kids are going to be in high school. Just lower your expectations of yourself, your kids, your life, and you're just going to be a lot happier because then like good things will happen. I'm not saying that we don't have goals and plans, but you can't. You day to day, you're just like I, we're just going to make it through. We are going to make it through this day, and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap for today's episode. And indeed, it is an amazing day. I hope you are having an amazing day where you are. I hope Hillary is having an awesome day wherever she is. I'm so happy she joined us for this week's episode. Make sure you check out Hillary's podcast, Pulling Curls, wherever you listen to podcasts. You should also check out her blog at pullingcurls.com, where she has oodles of resources from organization and money-saving tips to pregnancy and postpartum and everything in between. Make sure you're following her on all the socials too. You can find those in today's show notes over at secretmomhacks.com slash episode 37. I hope you're walking away inspired with tips either for yourself or that new mom you know. If that's the case, please subscribe for free. If you haven't already, give me a five-star rating and leave a review sharing your favorite takeaway so far. Speaking of reviews, a few more have rolled in recently. So today I want to read two reviews to you. One from Scott, one from Lady Blackwood. Scott Wyden says, dads tune in. Krista is awesome and the show is for moms and dads. As a dad of two, I'm hooked. Each episode, I walk away with a better approach to parenting. I'm so happy to hear that, Scott. Thank you so much for the kind words. And then Lady Blackwood says, great show. Krista is such a natural. Love this. Thank you. Thank you, Lady Blackwood. Really appreciate your reviews and subscribes and shares and all of the above. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Don't forget to stop by secretmomhacks.com where you can find transcripts, resources, and more. Stay tuned for next week's episode. And until then, you've got this mama.